All right, so one more example here of uh, simplifying some trig expressions involving fractions. So here we've got cosine x minus 1 over sine x minus sine x over cosine x minus 1. So, you know, something like this, it's not really maybe immediately clear what to do. Um, one thing I always keep in mind, typically if you have two fractions, uh, when you simplify things, you'll want to have a single fraction. Well, the only way to really get a single fraction is to have common denominators. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to get common denominators, and hopefully some things will uh, simplify out a little bit. So we've got cosine x minus 1 over sine x. Well, notice there's a cosine x minus 1 in the denominator. So really what I'm going to have to do for this first fraction is I'm going to have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by cosine x minus 1. And then what we'll have to do for the second fraction, so we've got sine x over cosine x minus 1. Well, okay, this fraction would be missing the sine x factor, so I'm going to have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by sine x. Okay, when you simplify fractions, the simplification's going to happen in the numerator, so um, I'm not really going to do much to the denominator. I'm not going to distribute that sine x or anything. And, and again, typically for things to simplify down, you want things to be factored so you can cancel. But So in the numerator, we'll have cosine x times cosine x. That'll give us cosine squared x. We have cosine x times negative 1, which will be a negative cosine x. We'll get another negative 1 times cosine x, which will be another negative cosine x. And then negative 1 and negative 1 will give us positive 1. Notice in the second fraction, we would have uh, minus sine x times sine x, which would just be uh, minus sine squared x. And then in our denominator, we, we would just have sine x times cosine x minus 1. So now the question is, <clears throat> you know, how do things simplify down? So, well, Certainly, I can. we've got a negative cosine x and a negative cosine x. We can make that negative 2 cosine x. We've got our plus 1 hanging out. Um, and then we still have our minus sine squared x. Again, we'll leave the denominator alone. Again, and if you're not sure, you know, should I multiply out the denominator? Well, I kind of think, what would it help? And uh, again, um, I don't think much. So unless you're really sure it's going to do something, you know, I say just leave it alone for the moment. I'm going to reorder things here a little bit. We've got cosine squared x. I'm going to write the minus sine squared x next. And then we still have our minus 2 cosine x plus 1. So I'm not doing anything here, just sort of uh, rearranging things, hopefully to make my next step a touch clearer. So this is where we have to bring in one of our trig identities now. So recall that sine squared... Um, plus cosine squared x, that's going to equal 1. So I think what I'm going to do in this case, um, notice the numerator, it already involves a lot of, uh, it involves to me mainly cosine x's, right? You've got cosine squared, you've got a cosine, we've got a number. There's a majority of cosines to me, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this negative sine squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve for sine squared. So this is going to be sine squared x. I can subtract cosine squared from both sides and get 1 minus cosine squared x. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to replace the sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. And I'm hoping, you know, eventually some things are going to start, start cleaning up here a little bit. All right, so again, you know, some of these problems can certainly be a little tedious. Uh, it's not always clear exactly what you need to do. So sine squared, I'm going to replace that with 1 minus cosine squared x. Then we have minus 2 cosine x plus 1, still left over uh, in the numerator. We've got sine x times cosine x minus 1. So let's see, uh, I'm going to distribute the negative uh, in our numerator in front of the 1 minus cosine squared. So that'll give us negative 1 
it looks like a plus cosine squared x. And then we have minus 2 cosine x plus 1 left over. Still our same denominator here of sine x times cosine x minus 1. But notice now we've got a negative 1 and a positive 1 in the numerator, so we can simply eliminate those. Um, we have a cosine squared plus a cosine squared. That's going to give us 2 cosine squared x minus 2 cosine x. Still our denominator is just kind of hanging out. Sine x times cosine x minus 1. Um, I think there's a little more we can do here though. Notice in the numerator we can actually factor some stuff out. Um, we could factor the 2 out. There's a cosine squared in the first term, a cosine to the first in the second term. That means we can pull out a cosine of x to the first term. Well, if we take 2 cosine x and multiply it by another cosine x, we'll get our 2 cosine squared x back. And 2 cosine x times negative 1, well that would simply give us negative 2 times cosine x. And we still have our denominator here, sine x uh, over cosine x minus 1. So hey, lo and behold, looky there. Um, we now have a cosine x minus 1 factor in the numerator. We also have a cosine x minus 1 uh, factor in the denominator. We can just simply cancel those out. We're going to be left with 2 cosine x over sine x. But cosine x over sine x is the same thing as cotangent of x. And now I think I would call it a day. Uh, not much more that you can do there. So again, you know, a lot of little things to do. Uh, again, at the beginning though, there's really not much to do to me other than get common denominators and then start just trying to grind this stuff down. Hopefully something will happen. I think, you know, these steps right in here are kind of the trickiest. Um, but again, typically if you see cosine squared or sine squared, you know, almost always you have to somehow manipulate this identity. And some, you know, it seems like, you know, the problems are set up to work, right? So it's just a matter of, you know, manipulating this identity. Um, and just, you know, it may not all, you may, the way you manipulate it the first time, you know, we could have gotten rid of the cosine squared um, instead of the sine squared. And well, I think you would end up playing with that and maybe uh, things don't work so well. So this is where it can be a little, like I said, a little tedious is just through the trial and error. But um, again, there's, hey, there's mostly cosines. Let's turn that into cosines. And then it's just a little bit uh, really uh, of just simplifying, factoring, and at the very end, just recalling your identity for cotangent.